This conference will now be recorded. All right. Excellent. Welcome again, everyone. Um, I'm Mark Rhodes with New View Strategies. Welcome to our September Mix It Up. Uh, I sure hope uh, we have a few more people joining soon because we're quickly getting to the best part of the conversation. It's finding out how to mix some fun drinks. But uh, before we do that, I just wanted to update everyone on uh, just a couple of events coming up. Make sure everybody's aware of what's happening in the community. And of course, uh, the big conference summit, the annual conference summit is coming up next week, virtual of course, uh, still hundreds of sessions. Hopefully you can join in there. I know New View Strategies is presenting quite a few. And, uh, and I believe they're gonna be recording, I think all of the sessions as well to have those recorded and available. Uh, the leadership goes beyond conference. I just peeked at it. Uh, stellar lineup for uh, end of October, so do take a look at that. And then um, I believe the Stone Ridge Connect conference is available to just anyone. Uh, it, I think it's it's either it's later in October as well. You can uh, check out their website for the dates on that. And of course, then our October uh, Business Central Mix It Up will be on October 28th and um, very curious we decided to go to the community this time and and uh, see what you all would like to talk about so go ahead and put in the chat at any point during our call today what you'd like to talk about at our next mix it up and uh, we'll see if we got some common themes there and we'll put that together for you so go ahead and let us know what you think all right I Go to meeting just exploded on me, so hold on one second. Okay. <laughs> so if you're just joining again, um, helpful to for everybody to hear properly. If you just keep yourself on mute, but do chime in, take yourself off mute, and chime in as we're going through this. Feel free to answer or ask questions, answer questions as well. And uh, hopefully you're ready to have a good time and an engaging conversation. And again, turn on your webcam if you're comfortable. We'd enjoy seeing you. And then don't forget at the end, really important, we've got a tie-dye shirt on the line here. We do a survey. I'll put the survey link in the chat in a little bit. We all want to vote on who shares the best tip or biggest contribution of the day because we're going to send them a tie-dye shirt. And as you can see, they're... Pretty colorful, so as tie-dye shirts tend to be. Okay, I think we're ready to go. I see some uh, additional folks joining in. David Singleton easily wins the prize for dialing in from the furthest away. I think it's approaching midnight where he's at. So, David, thanks for uh, for joining. See Steve as well. Minoxi's on. Good. And Carrie, excellent. All right, it's time to mix a drink. I'm going to throw it over to our bartender, Barkeep. All right. Well, thanks. As Mark said, I am the bartender. We'll do that in air quotes. We all know I'm not the world's best bartender, um, unless you like a really heavy pour. So if you do like that, then I am your favorite. Um, my friends, not so much. They usually call me the next day and say, what did you do to me? So no comments, Carrie Mathias. Um, so today's drink is the spiked fall harvest it is a favorite in the roads house we'll let mark talk about that later but what it is is equalish parts bourbon and you can see i can't spell the word bourbon but i'm not changing it um and then we'll have uh some natural apple cider i'm sure that's not natural but that's all that was at the convenience store and you can use seven up or ginger ale I'm using Sierra Mist. Um, as you can tell, there's a theme. I don't usually follow a recipe. Kind of applies to a lot of things. Um, and then some lemon. So what we're going to do is start with the apple cider. And we'll just pour. Eh, equalish parts is really uh, gives me a lot of room for uh, leeway here with this drink. So I don't know. That kind of looks good. So the apple cider. One of the things we have for you today is some other fun autumn drinks in the slide deck as well. There's an autumn fizz. Ooh, that smells that like good. Tequila. Smells really good. Um, all right, so a little bit more. I don't know. Oh, wow. That feels like equal. <laughs> now, is that bourbon or tequila there, Kim? Uh, just wait. It's a surprise for the end. 
<laughs> well, you, you slipped up so, already, though. <laughs> did it really? Anyway, so <laughs> we're going to pour a little, uh, stop it off with a little uh, Sierra Mist there and a little lemon. Just squeeze that all over the desk. Put that in there. And let's see, we'll just kind of mix this up. Give it a taste. <laughs> That's actually good. I can't believe that actually worked. So <laughs> what this is, yes, it is tequila. So this is tequila. It's called Adictivo um, Tequila. It's an Añejo. It's uh, made by a family for the last 100 years. Um, and they uh, age it for two years in French uh, oak uh, barrels. And it's uh, kind of smoky, kind of sweet, and actually it goes pretty good with this. So it's pretty close to bourbon, in case you were wondering. And that's what I got. So drink up, everybody. Hopefully somebody else is drinking besides me. Cheers. Thank you, bartender. Yeah, all right. I, I love the field testing that happens when Kim gets a hold of a recipe, right? Because it's, it's going to go through its paces. and. Uh, and and what I really like is, you know what? It doesn't have to be an exact science. Yeah, play with it. Have some fun. That's how you discover new drinks and, and new, uh, new ways of doing things. So thank you, Kim. Yep, Excellent. Hey, she mentioned some additional uh, – my go-to meeting is uh, give me fits. All right. Mentioned some additional drinks, variations for you, obviously, in the slide deck, and this is going to be posted out on our – uh, meetup group, so you can access this later on and have some fun this weekend. All right. So, are we ready to jump in? Let's talk about <laughs> the the longest named new release of a version ever, Business Central 2020 Wave 2 slash version 17, however you want to refer to it. Uh, does anybody have an official release date? I think it's coming out next week, but I haven't heard an exact date. Does anybody know? It's kind of interesting. I guess they are wrapping it up as we speak. I, I do know uh, Microsoft, uh, the home office in Lingby, is going to be presenting next week at Summit. Maybe they're going to announce it there that it's available for general release. You know how they like the hoopla. So we'll wait yeah, that's what that. last heard. Like they're going to announce it during the summit session. I would think so, yeah, yeah. Almost anticlimactic though, right? The release notes have been available for a while. I posted a link to those if you haven't seen those uh, in the chat. They were released, uh, well, several months ago. And most of what's in there you're gonna see, it might not be all the way finished and what have you, uh, but that's okay because they'll be wrapping it up pretty quickly. And then um, our team's been playing on the new version or an advanced release of that for what, a week or two now. And um, and we're going to be writing up some some uh, posts, uh, blog posts about that and our initial take on that, um, how you even get access to those things. So, but we thought, hey, let's let's uh, see what's in it and share our uh, favorite things about that. Uh, I know several of you have been playing with it for a while, and we'll, hopefully, we'll have something to share as well. And so, I know Kim was most anxious to get this kicked off for us because of a very exciting change. It seems like such a small thing, but yet it's going to save everybody countless hours probably when it's all said and done. Kim, what you got? Uh, yeah, so my, uh, the one thing I like, I like a lot of the things in the new release. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of great things in there. But one of the things that has always been the bane of my existence is navigate, right? It's, there's multiple places that they navigate. They go to different things. Um, you know, you're trying to walk somebody through like, hey, click on navigate. And then you're like, no, not that one, the other one. Like click here and click there. Like which navigate do I go to? Um, so that to me is a really cool one because I think it just makes more sense. So now they're gonna uh, name the non-promoted group in the action bar. And we have some screenshots because this will make more sense in, this, in the slides when you see it. Um, but the non-promoted group in the action bar has been renamed to related. Um, the group called report has been renamed to reports because there's usually more than one under there. Um, so 
you know, that's, I'm sure there's a lot of people that kind of maybe suggested that one. I tend to use too many commas, so that wasn't, wasn't a big one for me. But then the next one too is the action that was previously called navigate is now find entries. Um, so that one is pretty cool too. So if you kind of look at the, if you have a copy of Wave 2, the release, and you look at like the customer ledger entries, you can see kind of all those different changes and, and where those are on the menus. Um, and it's funny because I was playing with Wave 2 and then I went back to just regular business central and I'm like, oh my gosh, where's the, where's the find injuries? And now I'm like all over the place with nav, I'm all confused on navigate again. So that's the thing I like. So like I said, there's, um, or like Mark said, we'll send out the slide deck and you'll, you'll see some examples in there. I Mark? was actually a little depressed though, that the navigate that has always been like the nav a gate to me is gone. That's the final. They went from three to zero, right? I know. I'm like, couldn't they have left that just for us old folks? <laughs> hey, don't call old. I was going to comment on that before you said the word old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For us, no, uh, it's uh, long term users. <laughs> right. Long term users. And it's definitely like a um, common. Uh, Term that we use whenever we are guiding the users. Okay, where do I go? Just navigate, navigate. Like it just comes naturally because we've been using it for so many years. And now it's like, okay, find entries. Yeah, that makes more sense if you think logically and for new users, they would be like, yeah, you know, that makes sense. Find entries there, that's where I go. Um, so to me, yes, both are good, but um, yeah, navigate definitely is something that we are used to and find it very handy and it just rolls out of your tongue. <laughs> It does. And the fact that nav is no longer the name of the product, nav a gate right. doesn't mean as much, but it's just kind right. of sad. It, it is. I think they want to kill the nav name. They want us to completely forget Navision. You think? <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's an accident that they renamed it. But I remember when Navigate was first written back in the DOS version, it was a it was something amazing. No other software had anything even close to what that could do. Uh, it's yeah. been from the beginning. It's uh, that was in '96 or something when they wrote that. And these things, uh, they want to get rid of the names. They want the functionality, but they don't want the names. They want us to simplify this and make it all just blend in and forget the past. Sad, but that's what they were doing. Yeah, no, that I I would totally agree with you, David, on that because uh, when we first switched from Navision to Microsoft Business Solutions. I did not like that. And I, my reaction was exactly like Cynthia's was today. Oh my God, I feel so depressed. And I was in the same boat. I'm like, what is Microsoft doing destroying this product? It's so cool. <laughs> but here we are, it's still changing. Now, wait a minute. I'm not saying it's destroying the product because I think we have come so far with so no, many yeah. things with Business Central, but yeah, yeah. I'm just depressing. <laughs> well, it depends on how you word destroy. The, the core issue is, is that Microsoft don't want customers to buy Navision or BC. They don't want us to buy accounting systems. They don't want us to buy ERP. They want us to only buy one thing, and that's Azure. That's it. That is the only. If Microsoft had a had their way, you would log into the website, and there would be a button that says "Buy Azure." How much Azure do you want? And thank you. Goodbye. That's all they want to sell. And the other names, it's just, they don't want you choosing what product you buy. They don't want you to deciding what features what you want. You, they just want you to buy Azure and they'll decide what you need. And removing it, making it all generic, getting rid of all of the, um, uh, all of the names and the, the things we remember makes it easier for them to just generically sell us whatever. That is true. And they've been doing this since, um, well, you know, they, they told us three year, the first three years they won't touch everything. So that was from 2001 till 2004. And then they started doing this. So it's 16 years they've been doing it. We've had a long, a long enough to get used to it by now, I think. 16 years. Yeah. I'm actually yeah. impressed that they still support and continue to develop for as many products as they do. Because I don't know who among us would want to do that, right? It's, uh, it's incredibly complicated just for one product alone on how many versions they have to support 
in all of those uh, updates along the way and then continue developing going forward. And then you multiply that out by five different ERP systems, six, I guess, plus whatever, right? Um, I, I probably would have consolidated them much sooner than they ever have. It's amazing. Well, the, the disaster of green means that, you know, they did it wrong at green and they never tried to fix it. I mean, what they should have done is just branch, just taken all the other products and started with a new product from a, a completely new product back in uh, 2004. They should have just made green happen and just made it done. That should have been simple. And then just the other products would have vanished. Well, it is interesting about what what point do you throw it away and the fact that they've kept it around for the uh, for the existing customers. Um, but I think we're getting a little off track. Let's talk about the new release. Uh, so, Kim, thank you for sharing that. It's the simple little things sometimes, right? So I love seeing that. I also discovered, speaking of simple things, you'd think I just I wasn't sharing my slides all of a sudden. So sorry about that. Um, so we caught up there. Who else has had a chance to look at the uh, release notes, play with the new system, and has something to share about the new release? I'm thinking uh, maybe Shannon has. Steve, do you want to chime in? Let's see who else is on that may have been playing. Anyone? I actually, this is Shannon. <laughs> I actually hey, Shannon. wish I had more time to do it. We just actually, um, because we were acquired this year, we had to rejoin Collaborate, and it's been quite a pain in the, you know what, with Microsoft. <laughs> and so we're trying to get our new version, but it's been quite a pain. But I will say um, one thing that I'm interested in seeing, because I'm going to the Biz Apps call um, this week, I'm interested to see what they have developed with Teams. Um, so uh, Steve and I are actually preparing at um, Summit. We're, we're presenting a Summit presentation on Teams, and there is a way to link, you know, Business Central as a yeah. whole as a URL. But we're interested to see what will that integration look like. So that's the one I'm the most excited about is seeing what Teams can do. I have a lot of use cases in my head of what we could do with that. So uh, Shannon, Summit's next week. In case you didn't know. Oh, yes, I know. I'm joking. All right. I have five presentations. I know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. I know what you're doing Are we this supposed weekend. supposed to be doing presentations? I don't do it yet. <laughs> no, but that, that is a cool point. I am attending that session where you guys are presenting the integration with Teams. I read through it or watched it when Steve posted it on um, Twitter. So definitely looking forward to it. I'm going to use that once I have it. <laughs> I mean, so, I have yeah, I'm not the business central yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm excited to see what they're gonna do. I'm I'm curious to see like what first wave will be versus like what as a whole they're gonna put in there because I feel like um, it's gonna change over time. Um, I'm really hoping that this will kind of solidify the integration with SharePoint because I feel like that's still pretty weak. Um, there's a couple uses for SharePoint we're gonna be sharing, but it's it's not where it needs to be. So, um, but those of you who don't know that new product manager that's on that side, um, he he is um, share. He used to work with SharePoint and those systems. So right, I think that's right. going to really help, you know, bring that full force because we're getting a lot of client requests for that. They're like, okay, well, I know there's document storage, but how does that go back to SharePoint? And so I'm hoping Teams yeah. kind of helps solidify that. But we'll see. Yeah, that's a great point. I hadn't put two and two together there, Shannon. But yes, the new new GM there did come from SharePoint. So I, I saw the integration with Teams too, and I haven't looked at it yet. You, you said you have some use cases in mind. What what are some ways you could use the, that functionality? Have you thought about? Yeah. So we get into. Oh, I got. Hold on. Okay, that's better. Um, sorry, I got my phone going with my earbuds. Um, we do a lot of services based work and project time, um, actual versus budget. But I was just thinking like outside the box and I was thinking you could actually have a team like inside your team, you could have a team for every um, area of finance, right? So I could have accounting, like my main accounting year closed. I could have an AP team. I could have an AR team. In that team, we could share all of our documents for month end. Um, but part of that with, you know, Business Central is 
you know, rather than leave the team, I can view my reports, I can run my trial balances, um, maybe have those trial balances fit out to teams where I'm not even using BC, I'm just using teams as a whole. Um, so there's a lot of cool things, you know, to kind of think outside the box to kind of centralize where your work stream is. So I'm curious to see what Microsoft is thinking. Um, yeah. users will need from teams because usually when we get that first run people are like uh we'll see and then it gets better so yeah. that's yeah. that's my guess of what's going to happen excellent any any other uh questions thoughts around that i see steve has joined us and he's channeling in his, his inner belichick hey i'm a jets fan remember that this is my Andy that's exactly why i said that <laughs> <laughs> We want to know, do you, are you are you wearing your tie dye though? Are you wearing your tie dye? My tie dye's in the laundry. You don't want to know. What, uh, I was doing a lot of uh, summertime activities over the weekend, and the it was the last day for pool because we had eight, 75, and it was like going in the pool. So somebody threw me in the pool with the tie dye on. So it's uh it's upstairs in the room, but yes, I do have the tie dye. Thank you. All right. <laughs> All right. Who else has? some advanced insights to share, or some questions that maybe we can answer. I want to see Smartless Designer. Who said that? Ryan McBee. All right. Ryan, I'm going to have to bump you from the call, OK? OK. <laughs> I'm teasing, of course. Um, Hey, share why that is, because that's not the first time I've heard that and probably won't be the last. Share share why that's so important. Um, I don't think it's important. I'm just, you know, GP is my background and I, mm -hmm. you know, I was logged into the new preview version and, and I think I saw somewhere where it said, hey, Smart List Designer is part of this. And I was like, hey, there's something actually in here I know. And so I um I went to type in Smartless Designer and then it's like, hey, you got to do, go download an app or something. And then there was no app in the app store. So I was like, well, how's this supposed to work? And um, I can tell you the reason it's important because um, I believe your background is, might be nav, but Smartlist and Smartless Designer, like end users, absolutely like eat those things up. Like you could do webinars for days on Smartlist and um, it's just it's just more like an end user thing that they they absolutely adore. Yeah, this is this is Lorna, and I agree. I'm a little worried that Smartlist Designer got dropped with the the layoffs that happened, um, and I and I don't know that they're seeing value in the tool. What I saw when I was doing a, I had an opportunity to get a preview of a version of it is is because you can grab from any table if you have the right yeah. permissions. I can if I, you do have to be smart enough to know the table. You have to understand the fields, but you had to know that with. GP smart list, but as an end user, man, I could rip data out of the system really fast. And yeah, yeah, people love it. Yeah, so it's it's important to if anybody who we're talking about moving from GP to Business Central, it's a it's a path because they're used to being able to get data quickly out of the system. And the list pages in Business Central are fantastic, but they don't always have all the tables that we want. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I've and this. Some of, no, go ahead. This is Shannon. We're just we're seeing a lot of that too. So obviously we were a prior GP partner, still are a GP partner, and obviously moving a lot of people off of GP, um, where they were able to take two lists. You know, obviously the lists in BC are great, um, but within GP they had that capability to take two lists and kind of make their own data queries and their own reports. Now we can do that with a little bit of ODBC work, but it's just not the same, you know, from a, from a user perspective. Um, so we are seeing that. I'm really hoping whoever said they think it got dropped. I seriously hope that's not the case <laughs> um, because uh, I think that really needs to be part you, of the product. You, well, you've um, been that's telling your, point. You, and you've been telling your GP customers too that it's coming. It's been oh, yeah. published that it's coming. So if we have oh, to yeah. backtrack, it's it's going to be like <laughs> not not a happy day. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's you know a, a big core of what Microsoft's going after. So they would be kind of foolish to drop that at this point, but I'll just keep my lips shut, not say anything else about that. So yeah, I was looking forward to it, but that's why. Well, one of the things that I've noticed is that at the top of almost every page is some sort of reference of stating, we plan on this coming out with the release, but it may be later. <laughs> you know, it's whatever the verbiage is. So I have a feeling that as much as some of these are showing up for October 2020, 
Some say November, some say December. I'm thinking some of the October list is going to be later than October, or at least that's what I'm noticing. There you go, Steve. <laughs> yeah, and I, when does uh, this when does this rollout actually hit end users? Sometime in October. Yeah, nobody's actually um, sure. Our best guess is that they will announce that it's at general acceptance next week during their summit uh, keynote presentation, which I guess is going to be on Wednesday. I'm not sure the exact time or anything, but okay. So hopefully, hopefully next week. Wednesday is right, Mark. Okay, thanks. Excellent. Cynthia, I know you've been playing around with the new version. What have you yeah, seen Yeah, it's there? another one of those little things. Again, there's yeah. all kinds of cool stuff in here, but as a person who works so much with the end users in training, uh, the fact that we can now bring up a request page for a report, put our parameters in, put our selection in, hit preview, say, oh, darn it, I picked the wrong format, we can close the preview and the request page is still there. We don't have to go find it again. I have to start all over, good. No, and I, you know, that has been a little pet peeve of mine in the system for years that every time I run a report, it closed, you know, the request page is gone. I can't get back to it easily. So now you can open up as many previews. You can do one at a time. So I can preview it, say, oh, that's what I want. But don't forget from preview, we can still send a printer or um, download it, right? So then I could go back to the preview, run it a different way, or I'm sorry, the request page, run it a different way. So I was actually, little, little thing, I was just so thrilled mm. to see that. See, all those pizzas that you sent to the development team every Friday worked. <laughs> see that? Yeah, so now I can uh, stop doing that is what you're saying? Or do I have to do that for well, SmartList unless now? Unless there's something else, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we could probably take up a collection for that, yeah. Right, right. Can I can I ask a question about that? You said you've been, um, this is a, a something that's been a bug for you or an issue for you for quite some time, is that right? Mm -hmm. how, how do you get, I mean, as a end user, how do you get that feedback back to Microsoft? Because, I mean, uh, you know, as a partner, you've got a channel, and as an MVP, you've got a channel. But as an end user, what channel do you actually have to get that feedback back to Navision, to Microsoft? David, can you see me? No. Oh, you, uh, you can see me, right? I'm, I'm, I'm doing the connection thing or whatever that's called. That's exactly what I was going to ask as well. Yeah, There's I mean, the it's, site, is right? there a gap? Is there a whole? Ideas. Is, There's the missing? idea site where you vote on all the suggested product enhancements. And yeah, you can but actually the votes post don't them, get, right? no one looks at the votes, do they? Yeah, they regularly review it. You'll see they're, they do. they're moderated and commented. They'll give you feedback on clarifications, things like that. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I mean, that's, a, that's the same place that partners in MVP used to go to exactly. ask for stuff too. Right. Yep. I yeah, do like believe they look at it. I really do. They absolutely they do. do. I can they do. guarantee it. You said you've been, it's like a few years you've been uh, asking this question. Many years. You'll see votes on, on Twitter, people asking for upvotes on a particular idea, and you'll see several years worth. Now, there are some things where they've been sitting there for two years and have 20 votes and it's kind of idle. So it's a matter of us right. finding the value in that item and resurrecting it, getting attention on it and bringing it to their attention. Because there, are, I think there are several hundred active items on the list. Mm -hmm. Right. And the other challenge is that people will put things out there and describe them differently, but they're the same issue. Yeah. And I have yeah. seen them um, comment about combining issues or making points that, you know, right. we've, we've, we've pulled together these four similar issues and it's represented this way. So by seeing that, it makes me know that they're paying attention. Somebody is. <laughs> we just right, but it does, take, it, it does take a long time for that to happen. Mm -hmm, sure does. Yeah, so they, just, they you know, I, I work it. for a, um, a author and developer of a software package way smaller scale, of course, than Microsoft. But part of my job was to go through all of the customer requests and prioritize them and figure out where it would be the biggest bang for the customers because there's only so much. So, again, that's why I think I get so excited about some of these smaller things because yeah. it seems like they're starting to split their time between the big dollar things that will get them sales 
and the things that are really about usability, because I think usability sometimes is left behind. Yeah, I, I don't I ask because this isn't it isn't a new thing. It, it's um, you know the Navigent team have always been very 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 slow to respond to things that you think are just should be fixed. You know, like the mm -hmm. the old print button. There used to be a button in the old uh, Windows version of Navigent that said print, and it didn't do anything. And it was only there because in the uh, in the specs it said that you, the, the button had to be there. And it took them four or five years. And the first bug I ever reported in um, in Navigent Financials was version one, which was released in 1995, and they fixed it in Navigent two, or Dynamics now 2017, so three years ago. So that was like um, 22 years it took. I mean, that's, those are exceptions, but it does seem something that through the years, exactly what you said is something I've been hearing for decades now, that these things that are so obvious and simple still even today take a long time to get fixed. Well, I've so just learned I've, not to focus on them and try to focus on what's good in the system because as long as the votes are out there and we've made sure that they're aware of it, there's not much more we can do. So I even, when I'm training users, I'll say, all right, this kind of sucks, but guess what? Look what we can do. And I just try <laughs> to focus on the positive. It's all you really can do. For yeah. those of you not familiar with the ideas portal that we're talking about I went and found it got the URL and posted that in the chat and I got to tell you from my involvement at dynamic communities uh, I can't talk to how long they take to uh, provide some enhancements and answer some what we think are pretty straightforward uh, uh, improvements however I can talk to how important this ideas portal is they are incredibly focused on it. Um, they have very good stats to report in terms of um, the enhancements that are suggested and the fixes that, that are suggested through the portal, how much of those that they actually address in, in the next version. They track that very diligently and I've, I've gotten some of those stats. And in addition, when I was still at Dynamic Communities, um, Yannick came to me several times and said it is incredibly important that we publicize this ideas portal that we drive a lot of traffic to it we get a lot of votes because that's how we get stuff done and i worked with him on a couple initiatives to make sure that the community knew about that and that people were going there and voting which is obviously the the most important thing so um like i said i can't speak to of course you know the development timelines and so forth they certainly changed to a very agile approach and um, just because you don't see something in the October release, you very well may see it in the November release. They they roll things in that quickly nowadays. So yeah, we just told I, I can chapter, share anyway. We just told all of our chapter members in New York today, and then tomorrow is Boston. But we we're going to tell them about the link. Um, we promoted it. Today. If you want to make change, here's your opportunity. Yep. If you never knew about it, so yeah. and would you, the faces are amazing. I mean, even though we're all virtual, but it's like. You know, it's like you can do that. You know, it's like it. it you know, it, it's. I know it's a lot of it is word of mouth, but it is out there. I mean, I remember from years ago throwing a couple of ideas in there and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it's out there, and um, yeah. I know it's looked at, like Steve said. I'm assuming right. they have they have some higher level priorities. Like I know they worked a lot yeah. on the back end, a lot on the development tools, a lot on language restructuring. They had to make a lot of breaking changes in order to prove the, the platform for the product. So it may take them a while until they get back to functionality and user features. Who else has something to share or a question about the new release? Well, you know me, I can share something if nobody else has something. <laughs> All right, let's have it. All right, I'm gonna try to share my screen if you let me. And, uh-oh, don't let her, be careful. Yeah, that was... <laughs> maybe we should take a vote on that. Uh... <laughs> Steve, come on, dude. There we go. Kim, look at your mohawk. And it's just what happened today. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say I woke up like this, didn't 
do any effort. <laughs> Belinda, do you have it? No. Oh. Oh. Why not? I don't know. Oh, now I can. Okay. Okay. Um, let me find the right monitor. Okay. Oh, not that. That's what Kim and I are doing. Oh, so is that. Never mind. Okay. Um, see, Kim, I was really working. Okay, so Power BI. I'm going to uh, just quickly go in and connect to the date, uh, the fiscal period. So I want to show you how you can create a date period off of our date table, off of your fiscal, uh, oh, wrong one off your fiscal period, particularly if it's something like 445 or something weird. So business central, here we go. And, and I don't know why I was thinking today was at 430, not four, but sorry, I was a little late. And sorry, I should have had this loaded already. So you need to have a web service that gets to your fiscal period. So you could go through and just set that up. So it's actually called accounting periods. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up the query editor with that information in there. Now the uh, fiscal period table inside of BC uh, only has like the start date and it has like the whatever the month name you give it. It doesn't have like all of the detail in there. And if you wanna have a good date table, you need to account for every day of your fiscal year. And this is only half <laughs> start date. So I'm gonna quickly come in and uh, one of Belinda's three rules is get rid of columns you don't need. I'm gonna go ahead and keep the month out there. So now I just have a column with the starting date and the name of the month. And if I wanna create a row for every date in between, then I'm going to need to come up with what the last date is. And aside from the fact that, let's just pretend for a moment, if you will, that, um, well, I'm gonna do the calendar day, but you could, I'll show you how you could come in and make it 445 if it's 445. I'm gonna go to add column. I'm going to choose, whoops, got a column. Yeah, column from examples. And I'm just gonna start with the first column and type in a four, and a four and a five. Normally you're referencing a column that's in there. And I'll do four, four, five again, and then maybe one more time. And eventually it's going to pick up and every third month will be five. And so that's how I could get like my four, four, five weeks. And then if I look and open it up, you could see I need to make it all uh, numerical, but that's a really cool way of doing that. But what I'm going to do here instead, I'll take the starting date. I'm going to uh, come up to add column. I'll go to date. And I'm going to get the, um, actually, I want to get the last day of the month. So instead of using date here, let me come in. Oops. I had this all set to show you something cool. And now I go like, I got myself off in a tizzy being late. Okay, I'm gonna um, add a column, go to custom column, and I'm gonna add the end of the month. I'm not gonna get anything real fancy. I just wanna show you how you can uh, explode your columns or explode your rows. So we'll get the end of the month, and there actually is a formula. I'll share with you guys my formula if you want. And I wanna get the um, date dot, uh, end of month, and that's got to be exact. And then in parentheses, I will select the starting date. And that should give me my last day of the month. So now I have my first day and my last day of the month for each one of these. So if I want to explode, so I have a row for every single month, because I could even go so far as to come in and say, you know, add the year in, so I got the year and I could come in and add the quarters if I wanted to, but um, I'm not gonna do all of that right now. But what I can do is come in and add another custom column and we'll call this one date. And the date will actually be a list of, uh, let me get my notes. I always have to look at this, yeah, list of dates. There it is. And then IntelliSense is telling me I need to enter in the start date, which is right here. 
and I need to tell it how many um, I want to have. Oh, so I forgot the um, the number of days in the month. I need that. Sorry. Got ahead hey, of Belinda. My... Yeah. I'm I am terribly sorry. I did not realize that we were already over time. Uh, how uh -huh. much more time do you think do you need? Oh, about three minutes. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that was a cheat on me, right? <laughs> Because I came out a half hour late and it was already over then, wasn't it? So I'm going to um, do a days of the month. And I will do the ending end of the month to the beginning of the month. So I have the number of days in the month. And I'm going to make that a whole number. So I don't need the hours, minutes, and seconds. So I need to add one more day to it because I did a subtraction. So I'll go to transform and add one more day so now i have the exact number of days in the month and now i can come in and add and explode the days and this is going to help you guys a lot if you start building out something and you want it to have or need it to have um, like a year to date or month to date and so forth okay so i'm looking for a list dot date and then the start will be the starting of the month how many I want for each month will come from the number of days in the month. And then I need to tell it uh, the duration that I want. And I could send this link out to you guys so that you have it. And I want it to be one day, zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds. And then I know that feels like it might be like, what? This is crazy, Belinda, but this is M code. M code. And now that I've put this in, I have this list here and if I click on to expand, I can expand a new rows. We're almost there. Oh, we're actually there. Um, so you can see I have January 1st, January 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and it just exploded. And if it goes down to uh, uh, April, uh, February, you can see I have 28 days. So I've actually taken the data from the account table, which only had the first day of the month, and with just a few uh, custom calculations, I now have a full date period that I uh, date table that I could use and run some DAX off of, and that's it. Whew. My head hurts. Thank you, Melinda. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Um, am I on the right thing? Okay. Yes, I think it's good. All right, and. Um, I think the, the conversation is going to continue. We'll see a lot more next week at Summit. Like I mentioned, uh, a lot on the new views team are doing uh, blog posts and YouTube videos about some of the new features as well. In fact, uh, Carrie Carroza uh, just had an article published on uh, Microsoft Dynamics World talking about some great new features. So you can check that out as well. And um, I think we'll continue seeing some things after next week uh, too. So it'll be it'll be good to see. But I'm I'm encouraged that uh, they continue to uh, pour so much into our beloved product and <laughs> and uh, continue to uh, to take care of things that, that need to be taken care of like that. So any um, any closing questions for the team? What's okay. on the agenda for next time? Well, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I, I got to send you some money in the mail now for, for, for doing such a perfect Sorry, segue yeah. there. <laughs> you told me not to say it, but I had to, right? <laughs> perfect. I want to hear from folks what you want to talk about next time. So throw it in the chat or throw it in the survey. Um, I forgot to get the survey link. So let me go get that real quick and put that in the chat as well. And again, really want to hear from you what we should talk about and make sure we're uh, we're talking about things that people find helpful and relevant. So here is the survey. Please go do that quickly. And again, I'll throw these slides out on the meetup group and the recording as well in case you want to share. And uh, if there's nothing else, thanks very much for everybody uh, joining in today. One thing. Yes. Real quick, when you're going down through the release notes, 
make sure you go all the way down through everything because that modern client has a lot of the changes in there. So if you just focus on the application changes, you're going to miss some of the usability changes in the modern client. And I kind of am guilty of, I was like, oh, okay, now we're getting to this technical stuff. I don't care as much about this. And I didn't keep going. And I found out I was missing a lot that was listed for the modern client. So that's a great tip. <laughs> that's a great tip. Thank you, Cynthia. Yeah. Good point, Cynthia. I was That's actually, right. Right. while thinking of this survey, I was putting that in there. What are the challenges you have faced so far with the BC that we should be aware of as coming on as a new user from the user side as well as from the technical side? Because those are kind of gotchas that you get caught up into. I'm like, how do I do this? <laughs> right. That's a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, I'll folks. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining today. I hope everybody has a great afternoon. Hopefully see you on the summit session next week. Everybody take care. Bye. See ya. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks.